To know the uh, dry matter content in your samples is really important because when you analyze your samples, you refer the content to the gram per kilo dry matter. Uh, your samples that you will get in the lab uh, has been prepared. We have pre-dried them at 60 degrees overnight and we do and then we have milled them and we do this drying because we need a stable sample. If the sample is too dry it will absorb some moisture from the air or if it's not dried enough it will dry out while we store them because sometimes we might analyze some extra uh, components or, or we do some extra analysis after half a year or something like that. So uh, now I will show you how to do this final drying to determine the dry matter content you have in your sample when you analyze it. So here I have uh, picked out some samples. It's rapeseed, whole rapeseed, or well, it's not whole, but <laughs> it has been whole. Uh, milled, pre-dried and milled. We have a wheat sample, a silage sample, and a straw sample. We weigh the sample into a porcelain crucible, which looks like this. And we need around approximately one or to two grams of, of sample. Usually we use two grams. So when we analyze dry matter, we use uh, a balance with three decimals. So it's capable of weighing one milligram. Uh, I place the crucible on the balance and record the weight of the crucible, which is a Tara weight, in this case 21.847 grams, and it's number 549. I tear it and then it's important to, to mix the sample before weighing because we want to have a representative sample. Yeah, so this is approximately two grams. I record the weight of the sample, so, and this was rape. Seed. Seed. Uh, yeah, that's it. So then I continue with the next one, the hat, which is wheat. I zero the balance, put on the crucible, record the, the weight, zero, a bit more. Yeah, around two grams.
that's enough. So, that's it. So, here are the samples that we weighed. We put them in to a drying oven, which is 103 degrees and they should stay here overnight. So tomorrow morning we will take them out and put them in a desiccator. Now the samples has been in the drying oven at 103 degrees overnight and we will take them out. We, when we take them out, we put them in the desiccator to be sure that they don't absorb any moisture from, from the air. So, we put them in the desiccator. So we put on the lid and slide it on and close the tap. So now we have taken out the samples uh, from the drying oven, 103 degrees. They have been here for about an hour, so now the samples has cooled to room temperature. We put them in a desiccator. This is called a desiccator because we don't want the samples to uh, absorb any moisture from the air. In the bottom of the desiccator we have some uh, uh, drying agent or yeah, uh, silica gel that absorbs the moisture if there is some moisture in, in the desiccator. So we put the samples in and then we close the tap and no air is allowed to pass into the samples. When we open the tap, we will hear, maybe you can see, I see, you can hear it. Yeah, you hear? The sound and this means that air is passing in to the desiccator because when we put them in the samples in they are warm and the air in the desiccator is warm and when it cools it compresses a bit and when we open so we get a very very slight a tiny vacuum and then when we open it, we allow air to pass in. So, now it's possible to open the lid. Hopefully. Oops. The surface of the lid and also here is very smooth. And we also put some fat to uh, be sure that it's really really tight so we slide on on the lid when we put the samples in so now it's time to weigh the samples I take up one crucible at a time because we don't want to leave the samples in the air moisture so I record the weight uh, So, I check that the balance is zeroed.
Now we have weighed the samples at, after drying at 103 degrees and we want to know the ash content as well. So we do that by putting them into 550 degrees for three hours. So I place the crucibles on a tray and open the ashing oven. and put them in. So, 550 degrees for three hours. So these samples have been in the ashing oven for three hours. And I opened the desiccator and take them out. They have cooled to room temperature and I put them on the balance and weigh them. We'll see where is this one here. This is the residue after burning all the organic matter. It looks like this. This is the rapeseed sample. Here we have the wheat. It's not very much left at all. The silage looks like this. And here we have the straw sample. Now you have all the weights you need to calculate dry matter in ash in all your samples. Good luck!